Hey guys, welcome to the notes for setting up systems. These are the first set of notes for unit five. Our essential question is what is a system of linear equations and how can I set one up? So previously in unit three and unit four, we've talked about lines and linear equations. However, we've only talked about setting up one of them. So if we had a word problem, we would only set up one with the variables. When we would graph them, we would only graph one equation. But in unit five, we're gonna be dealing with two equations. So we'll be graphing two equations, setting up two equations, um, solving with two equations. So that's like the big thing in unit five. Oh, and this is why I have this at the top. When setting up a system of equation, if you always identify the variables. This is something that we tend to forget because it's something so little and we don't really think about it. But if someone were to read your equations, they need to be able to understand what the variables represent. And if you don't tell them what the variables represent, then it's gonna be really hard for them to know what you're talking about. Okay, so number one. Bill bought some neon fish for $2 each and angel fish for $3 each. He bought a total of 20 fish for $45. Now before we get into jumping about um, what our variables are and what our equations are, I do want to preface that we do have two types of equations that we usually set up. Sometimes your variables are on the same side of your equation and sometimes they're on the opposite side of our equation. The times that where our variables are on the same side, so for example, x plus y equals 10, this tends to be an easier equation for us to set up where we struggle is when the variables are on opposite sides, so something like x equals y minus 3. When I'm talking about variables being on the same side, again, easier for us to, easier for us to, uh, ugh, easier for us to set up, my gosh. But when they're on the opposite side, we're talking about the relationship between the two variables, and that's where we get stumped sometimes. So when we get to equations like that, just make sure you're really paying attention and understanding where, where we're coming from from that. Okay, so... Again, back to number one, so Bill bought some fish, right? So we know he bought some neon fish and he bought some angel fish. So we need to identify these two variables. Um, and the amount of variables in your um, word problem is gonna identify how many equations you're gonna need. So if I'm talking about a word problem where I have horses, chickens, and pigs, right? And I'm trying to figure out how many horses I have, how many pigs I have, and how many chickens I have. I'm going to have three equations because there's three variables. But in this specific problem, I have neon fish and I have angel fish. Because I have only two variables, then I'm going to have two equations. So basically, if you only have one equation for this problem, it's technically wrong. You can't really solve it. Okay, so our first variable I'm going to use is n. Okay, and that's gonna represent neon fish. But we also have to be specific. Are we talking about the color of neon fish, the cost of neon fish, the amount of neon fish, right? So you can't just say N equals neon fish because I'm like, okay, what does that mean? You need to be specific and tell me it's the number of neon fish, right? If you just say neon fish, I'm gonna be like, what about the neon fish, right? Okay, and then our other variable is going to be angel fish. So number of angel fish. Okay, now you're probably wondering why, like, well, why can't I do NF for neon fish and AF for angel fish? You don't want to add in more variables than you need, right? So if it's one thing, then you need one variable. If you put NF, now you have two separate variables. And so you don't want to add in more variables than you need. So if it's one thing, you put one variable. Don't try to be fancy and be like, oh, let me be fancy and put NF for neon fish. That doesn't work. Everything will mess up. Don't do it. Okay. So I've identified my variables, so that's good. Now let's set up our equations. So I know that I have two variables, which means I'm gonna end up with two equations. Okay, so let's look at the information that we have so far. We know that neon fish costs $2 each, and angel fish costs $3 each. Well, neon fish, remember, N stands for the number of neon fish. And I know that for every neon fish that we purchase, or Bill purchases, it's gonna cost $2. So that's going to be 2N. Angel fish costs $3. That's going to be 3A. Why A? Because it's for angel fish. You need to be super careful about where you put these variables. Okay. And I know that when I buy the neon fish and the angel fish for that amount of money, it's going to total $45. Now I want you to notice something. I want you to notice how we had $2 and $3 and $45. They all ended up in the same equation. You see how it's 2n plus 3a equals 45. All of the monies are always going to go together. They typically go together. It's very rare for them not to go together. 
Okay, now here's another thing. Once you've used some, oh my gosh, once you've used some information, you can't use it again. So I can't use a two anymore, I can't use a number three anymore, and I can't use 45 anymore. So once I've set up an equation and I've used those numbers, you cannot use them again, never. Okay, now the other bit of information we haven't used is that he bought a total of 20 fish. Well, what types of fish did he buy? He bought neon fish and he bought angel fish. So he bought the number of neon fish, which is represented by the letter N, and the number of angel fish, which is represented by the letter of A, those two amounts, those two numbers are going to equal 20 fish. Okay, now I'm going, I know I'm going really slow, but it's, we just, we kind of struggle with the word problems because there's so many things going on and you really just have to break it down piece by piece. But there's some helpful things, right? If there's money, the money things are typically going to go in the same equation together. And then you got to figure out that last part. This equation tends to be the one that's harder for people to set up because there's no numbers attached to the variables. Um, but today is just about setting up. So after you've set them up, you're pretty much done and we don't need to solve it because we don't know how to solve it. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Number two, there are 1,740 students in a school. There are three times as many boys as girls. All right, so we're talking about students, specifically boy students and girl students. So those are my two variables. If you wanna use X and Y for every single problem, I do not care, but I like to use the variables that help me remember what I'm searching for and what I'm solving for. So for boys, I'm gonna use the letter B. And if you want to use X and Y, you can. It does not matter. So B is going to be the number of boys, right? I don't care about what shoes they're wearing. I don't care about how they look, right? We're talking about the number. And then we're also talking about girls. So G is going to be my number of girls. Okay. Now let's use that first bit of information first. We know that there are 1,740 students in a school. Well a, well, a school is made up of boys and girls, the number of boys and the number of girls. Well, what represents the number of boys? B, right? B is going to represent the number of boys and the number of girls. Well, that is what happened to my B. <laughs> the number of boys, okay. And then the number of girls is represented by G. So I'm going to add these two totals up. If I add up the total of both of these boys and girls, it's going to give me 1,740 students. Okay. Now, like I said earlier, once you use that number, you can't use it again. Okay, so you don't want to use it again, and you can't use it again. Okay, the last part that we haven't used is that there are three times as many boys as girls. So this is one of those relationship equations where our boys and girls are not on the same side of the equation because we're talking about the relationship between the boys and the number of girls. So when there's a relationship type of problem, I do B equals G. And you're like, whoa, like why? Where did you get this? Well, obviously, right, the number of boys is not equal to the number of girls. But I'm going to treat this like a balancing scale, right? If I had a balancing scale, you know, like in science and you're trying to make sure that they weigh the same, I'm going to treat this like a balancing scale and I want to balance them out, okay? Now, there are three times as many boys as girls. So then you have to think about a little bit. What do I have more of? Do I have more boys or do I have more girls? I have more boys, right? I have three times as many boys. So for every one girl, there are three boys. So there are more boys. If I'm trying to balance the equation out, I need to have three times as many girls then, right? Because if I do three times B, then I'm going to have even more boys. I already have a lot of boys, and I'm trying to balance the scale out. That's why the three is attached to the G. I know you want to put the three next to the B. I know that because you want to write left to right, and you see that there's three times as many boys. So you're like, oh, three B. But that's incorrect because you're trying to balance out the equation. So you do B equals 3G, okay? All right, moving on. Now, I know that's super spaced out, right? So you can, you can fix it and you can make it look nicer than that. But I like to write them separated and then I like to fix it and push it all together in later. All right, number three. The sum of two integers is 75. The difference of the same two numbers is 23. Okay, so we're not given a ton of information. We're just, talk, we're just given that we're talking about two integers or two numbers, right? Remember, integers are just numbers that are whole but positive or negative. So we're talking about two numbers here. So if we're talking about two numbers, I need to identify those numbers. And I'm just going to pick x and y. x is going to be my first number. And y is going to be my second number. Because those are the things I'm talking about. I'm talking about two separate numbers. Again, if you have two variables, you're going to have two equations. 
the first bit of information I'm given is that the sum of the two numbers is 75. Well, sum is addition, and it's talking about the two numbers. So if it's the sum of two individual integers, the first number is represented by x, and the second number is represented by y, and I'm talking about the sum of them, so plus, and it says is 75. So is indicates to me equals, so x plus y equals 75. Then I have that the difference of the same two numbers is 23. So those two same numbers, if I subtract them, I'm going to get a difference of 23. Well, difference means subtract, so I have x minus y equals 23. And you're like, well, how do I know it's x minus y and not y minus x? Um, you don't. So that's, it's not really a big deal, right? I'm just trying to identify what these two numbers are. It doesn't really matter if you're y is your first number and your x is your second number, right? You're, either way, you're going to get the correct numbers in the end, so the way you set it up doesn't really matter, but so I just go x minus y. Okay, number four. The sum of two integers is 57. One number is 12 more than four times the other number. Okay, so just looking at this information, I already know that one of these equations, my two variables are going to be on the same side, and the other equation, they're going to be on opposite sides because it's the relationship between the two numbers. Okay, but I'm talking about numbers again, so I'm going to go ahead and identify. I have x is going to be my first number, and y is going to be my second number. Now, I know that the sum of the two integers, or the sum of the numbers, is 57. So x plus y equals 57. Now, one number is 12 more than four times the other number. Okay. So this is those times where like, okay, it's talking about one number compared to the other number. If they're comparing two different things, then the variables are going to be on opposite sides. So I have x and y, and I'm going to have an equal sign in the middle. I don't really know what I'm going to do yet. I just know I have to balance them. Now it's saying one number is 12 more than four times the other number. So clearly one number is bigger than the other number. I don't know which one, and it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to treat x as if it's the bigger number. I'm going to say x is the bigger number, so y is my smaller number. Because x is the bigger one, I'm going to do what I can to y so that y balances out and is equal to x, right? Because we want it to be like a balancing beam. We want it to balance. So we know that one number is 12 more than 4 times the other number. So I know it's 12 more than. Let's do this in a different color, actually. 12 more than. So because x is the bigger one, I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm going to add 12 to y because I want it to balance out. And then it also says it's 4 times the other number. So I'm going to do 4 times y. Okay, 4 times y plus 12 will give me x, right? x is one number. So if I read this as a sentence, it's saying one number is. So x is 12 more than 4 times the other number. So if I take 12 more than y, which is the other number, and then multiply y by 4, it'll balance out. Okay, so you have to think of it like a balancing scale and not really like, let me attach everything to where I read it left to right, right? It's going to trick you. The way you read it in a sentence is going to trick you. So you have to think of it like a balancing scale. Again, these are the ones we struggle with more. These typically, well, what is that? This typically comes easier to us, and then these we struggle with. Anytime they're on opposite sides, we struggle with it, and it's just... It's just fact, and I'm just giving you a warning. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about number five. The length of a rectangle is three less than twice the width. The perimeter is 80 centimeters. Okay, so we're talking about the uh, area of our perimeter of a rectangle, and we're talking about length and width. So the two things that we don't know in this problem are the length and the width. So those are my two variables. Now, obviously, we don't know the measurement of the width, um, and I'm okay with width and length if you just say width. You don't need to say like the number of centimeters the width or the number of centimeters the length, right? So in the other ones, yes, I would like you to be specific and tell me the number of cats or the number of dogs. But with W and L in a perimeter problem, I'm okay with you just writing width and length. Okay. The first bit of information is a relationship, inf uh, relationship information, right? The length of a rectangle is three less than twice the width. This is telling me, this is the relationship between two different things, which means that L and W are going to be on opposite sides of an equation for me. Okay, it also says the length of the rectangle is, right? The length is. Is means equal, so L equals 3 less than twice the width. Well, 3 less than, I'm going to subtract, 
And why am I doing it to the width, right? The length is the bigger thing. It's saying the length is. If I translate this like literally left to right, it says length is, length is. <laughs> so that's why I'm not really doing anything to length over there. Okay, so it's saying three less than, so I have the minus three there, and then it says twice the width, well, two w. So 2w minus 3 is e going to be equal to my length. OK, so like I said earlier, once you've used this information, you can no longer use it again. The last bit of information we haven't used is that the perimeter is 80 centimeters. And you're like, OK, cool. What does that mean? Well, let's talk about it. How do we find the perimeter of a rectangle, right? We're talking about a rectangle. Perimeter of a rectangle, you would add up all the sides. If I were to add up all these sides, I would have perimeter equals w plus l plus w plus l. Or more shortened, perimeter equals 2w plus 2l. This is the formula that we have. Well, what do we know about the perimeter in this problem? We know that it is 80 centimeters. We know that for a fact. So we have that 2w plus 2l equals 80. And those are our two equations. So our length is 2 times w minus 3. And our perimeter is 2w plus 2l equals 80. You want to know a common mistake that people do? This is what people do. Every time they see this problem, they go w plus l equals 80, forgetting that perimeter is that you take 2 times l and 2 times w. And someone does it. Someone always makes a mistake where they just do w plus l equals 80. Like they only pretend like, they pretend like half of the rectangle is there and the other half of the rectangle is not. So make sure that you know the perimeter formula and if you don't, draw a picture. Okay, 